Hello everyone, today I'll show you how to create your own decentralized application and use React and the Portis API to interact with the DAP. Before we get started, I'd like to give you a quick overview of the application we will be making. This is a transaction app. You'll be able to send Ethereum from one address to another. You'll also be able to check the user's balance. Let's send some Ether from one address to another. I'll send a small amount, let's say 0.1 Ether. We have a dialog box that appears when you attempt to send Ether. We will confirm it. It will give us back the transaction hash, and we can check this on etherscan.io on the Robson network. We'll wait a few moments. And done! We successfully sent 0.1 Ether. Going back to the application, if we click check balance, then we're able to see that the values are updated and point one either has been transferred. To follow along with this tutorial, I've provided boilerplate code in my GitHub for Portis React Starter. If you're following along with the tutorial, you need to have Node.js installed. You can follow the instructions on how to install Node.js on the official website. You'll also need an account on Portis in order to interact with the blockchain within the React application. I chose Portis because it's easier to get up and running needing only four or so lines of code in order to interact with your wallet. Finally, you need an inferior account in order to deploy your application to the official Ethereum blockchain. With that out of the way, let's get coding. Once you have cloned the repository, type npm install. Once that is finished, then type npm start. A React application should be loaded, but the buttons don't do anything. Let's start by connecting the app to Portis. In the folder called Services, create a file called web3.js. We will paste some code here provided by Portis when we register our dApp. Let's do that now. Once you have created your Portis account, go to the dashboard. Create a new dApp. Let's call our dApp Transaction. Make sure to type http colon forward slash forward slash localhost in this box as it restricts the DAP to a single domain for security purposes. Accept the conditions. Copy the code here. Let's paste it into the new file we've just created. Then make sure to export both of these constants. Navigate to the send transfer form, and let's import Web3 and Portis from there. We'll create the activate menu method here. We'd like Portis to show us a menu every time we would instantiate this method. Let's attach this method to the button so that every time we click this button, a menu shows up. Going back to our application, now Portis will ask if you'd like to connect to the DAP interface that we've just created. Click Continue. Now we have successfully connected our React app to Portis. In case the switch for keep users logged in between sessions is not enabled, make sure to enable it. This makes it so you don't have to constantly log into your DAP when any session changes occur. Since we are building a test application, we will be using a test network. Portis is currently set to the mainnet. We would like to change this to the Robson test network. Going back to web3.js, we can see that Portis is currently set to the mainnet. Let's change this value to the Robson network. And done! We have successfully changed networks. We can check to see this in the app. As you can see, this went from the mainnet to the Robson network. The next thing that we'd like to do is to be able to display our currently selected wallet address on the site. Let's do that now. Back to the send transfer form component, we'd like to make it so that every time you log in or change accounts, the sender's address is updated. We'd like to check for this information every time the component is mounted. Going back to our application, we see that the sender address has just been updated with our own address. If, let's say, we'd like to send Ether from a different wallet, we can click the Portis menu, Open Wallet, Menu. Just as a side note, make sure to enable Show Test Networks. Select Active Wallet, select the wallet, then go back to the application. We are able to see the sender's address being updated as soon as the wallet change is detected. Pretty cool. 
The next functionality we will be implementing is the ability to check our balance for both the sender and receiver. Going back to the send transfer form component, what we would first like to do is to create a method that checks the value of both the sender and receiver. Let's name the method check balance. We begin by initializing some local variables, sender balance, receiver balance, and message. Next is that we would like some validation checking so that we don't accidentally add any invalid addresses. First we check if the sender's address is correct. Then we grab the sender's balance based on the sender's address. The error checking is a bit different on the receiver's end. Error checking is only done if there's a value for the receiver address. Then we check if the address is correct for the receiver. Then we grab the receiver's balance based on the receiver's address. Finally, we'd like to set the state of each of the local variables to the corresponding state value. We'd like to have the address's balance every time the application loads or the address is changed, so we put the methods into the component did mount. We would also like to check the balance every time a button is pressed, so let's put it in the check balance button. Remember to bind the keyword this to the button, as we use the this.state values inside the check balance method. Let's see if this works. Great, it does. A balance has showed up for my address. Let's try testing it with another address. We'll go to etherscan.io and pick an address from the first miner we see. Let's paste it in here and check the balance. And great, it works. Before we end off with this part, I would like to get some test ether to play around with. The best way to get some test ether is through a faucet. Before I do that, I first would like to switch to an account with no ether. As you can see, the balance was reflected after the wallet was changed. And we can verify the balance and our address by opening up the Portis menu. I'll show you two ways how to access your account address. The first way is by activating the Portis menu and clicking on the address. The second way is by navigating to the main page, select your wallet, then click copy, and you're good. Let's navigate to the Robson faucet. Paste your address, and click on the transaction hash provided. As you can see, the transaction is still pending verification. And it's confirmed. Let's go back to our application to see if we have received our ether. Clicking check balance. Great. Our balance check is fully functional. Now that that's done, we can move on to creating our contract. For the next part, I'll be going over how to send a transfer to an address using a smart contract on the blockchain. Thanks for watching.